Hello, everyone, and welcome to AI with Sohini. This is the channel where we talk about everything AI, starting from laptops, careers, interviews, um, natural language processing, computer vision, recommendation engine, so on and so forth. So thank you for joining me today. Uh, if you've been joining uh, you know, for, for some time, you know that uh, being an expert in computer vision, I post a lot of videos around computer vision applications, being it you know, medical imaging or autonomous drive and so on and so forth. One of the key ingredients for computer vision is always an annotation system. So you know, a, a system where you can annotate images and you know, very quickly use that annotated data to train deep learning or machine learning models. Um, now, in the past, I have done some you know, reviews of some free annotation uh, you know, engines. Today, I'm going to be presenting a, a new annotation system called V7. Again, this has researcher and you know researcher and academic community support. So it has free versions as well as it has industrial grade uh, applications as well. So if you have huge batches of images that need to be constantly annotated, it could be medical images, it could be you know autonomous drive or drone images or even you know very specific uh, mat materials and parts such as uh, if you're trying to do uh, you know automated inspection using, using you know, computer vision, so visual inspection uh, use cases, you can very quickly generate quality annotated data using a system such as this. So today's topics are going to be around uh, you know, computer vision and annotations, and I will show you two use cases for medical imaging and one for you know, aerial and drone imaging. So if you're interested to learn how to do this, or if you're just here for entertainment, just sit back, relax, and watch these annotations because they can really be fun to watch. So let's get started. I wanted to point out that there are already a lot of resources that V7 has already provided in YouTube, also within their community uh, page in order to get into the nitty gritty of how to annotate better. But today, one of the features that I'm going to be using for annotation a lot today is called auto annotate, in which case what happens is you literally select a region of interest and the boundaries is automatically detected. And again, as you can see, this can be a huge relief whenever you are doing huge areas or very complicated images uh, and trying to annotate them you know, pretty quickly. The first step is always uh, in order to you know, add a new data set. So let's say that I am going to be starting with uh, you know, the heart, heart data set and I hit continue. And as you can see, all the different file types that are supported is old video, as well as you know most of the DICOM or the medical image formats um, that that's required. And if you if you are are doing this through CLI, so command line interface, so if you're using Python, then it, it gives you all of the commands that you know you can use uh, as well. So in this case, I am just going to be um, you know browsing. So I already have um, you know an NII file which I which I have uh, you know downloaded. Again, this is heart MRI. And again, I'm going to be putting the link to the, all of the data sets that I'm going to use uh, you know, in the description box below. So, so I have created this new data set. And now it will ask you for what are the classes that you want to annotate. Now, let's say that I'm, I'm just calling them segment, um, you know, segment one. And in these cases, I'm majorly going to be doing, um, you know, semantic segmentation or polygon. Um, so, and again, I can add them all here or I can do it at the end whenever I'm, you know, annotating. Now, it takes you to this page, which is the workflows. Now, workflows is just a way in order to make sure that your annotations, you know, can be can be done by a group of people and there is somebody to do you know quality checking as well so we will just pick the the basic workflow here and this is you know how it, it's, it's going to appear so once you annotate then it, it's going to be reviewed and if you can check you know if the quality is, is fine or not at that point it is deemed to be complete so once the data is is done uploading you can actually see it in, in this particular panel right here. And now this is where you, you assign it to an annotator. So if you say annotate, right now it's I'm the only annotator. So I am gonna just say save and apply. And then I, I can actually open it in the annotation mode. So this is how you can now see the, this is the annotate mode. So whenever you are you know, beginning to 
you know, do your annotations, this is the panel on the left hand side, which you're going to be using in order to do your annotations. And first of all, you can definitely, you know, visualize all of your, your frames. So on the left hand side, we will be using all of these tools which are useful in order to annotate. Now you can either, you know, start with uh, just key point skeleton tool in which you are just, you know, finding key points. So if you're doing lane markers or, you know, facial action units, this would be an extremely useful tool. Or if you wanted ellipses, or if you wanted, you know, polygon tools, or just adding a, a polyline. So all of this, uh, you know, these are the different functionalities. I'm going to be linking the video already by V7 with that, you know, shows and describes how to do all of this uh, in the video right now. Now, what we are going to be using today is this feature called auto annotate and video. So let's get started. So what you do is you click this functionality and now let's say I segment a particular region. So once I'm done, I can just hit save and here you see this uh, region is, is well annotated and in order to get out, you just hit enter and you're done. In order to edit, you go to a particular region and here you see all the different points of the polyline get highlighted. In order to zoom in and zoom out, you can literally use your, uh, you'll use your mouse. And if something is off, you can correct it. Now, if you can see that I have quickly annotated all of the regions, but again, the names, I have not changed them. So now I can actually go down here and either I can assign it as a keyframe. So in, in which case, it'll know exactly which frames that, that you, you want to, to be trained for your you know, machine learning algorithms, or you can, you know, say, uh, change my, my class. So in this case, I want to call it segment two. Finally, I wanted to show you what this, um, you know, tab actually means. So essentially, when all of these segments are annotated together, you can literally modify how their locations are changing over time. So as you can see, this is actually the time tool. So let's say that these are all of your segments at the, at the first keyframe, right? But as you are changing or scrolling across your keyframes, you can see that the regions of interests are actually moving. So at every single uh, you know, region of interest change, you can actually modify your polygon and let your volume scan for it. So here you can start seeing that segment number one and segment number two are slowly beginning to change. So at which point you can literally click on that particular segment and move it back to where it's supposed to be. say mark is complete. Now I just go back and you'll be able to see, um, you know, it is, you know, basic workflow and it is a hundred percent complete. Now let's add some drone images for our analysis, right? So here I have five images that I'd like to add. Save and continue. Again, pick a workflow, the basic workflow. And that's that. So you can literally see each and every one of your images at the bottom here. And you can see it right now, each and every one of them have been um, you know, assigned. So let's go to the annotate mode.
case if you're wondering how does this uh, what are these regions and how do these uh, you know how does this auto annotate work so essentially the idea around it is whenever you are making this subsection so you're sort of giving a region proposal that your foreground is you know lying within this particular region of interest so as you can see that whenever i give such a huge region of interest now you can see most of the you know drivable surface um, you know came under consideration so it is sort of giving the uh, the image an idea that you should filter out you know major of the foreground which lies in the subsection region of interest One thing I will mention is this tool allows for overlapping areas to be annotated. And this is a very common question that I get from a lot of my subscribers um, is if, if you have an, you know, overlapping areas, will this tool say that there is an error? The answer is no. So this tool allows for overlapping regions of interest. Once you are done with your tasks, you can literally go and, and check how many of these images have been annotated and how many of them are you know, still pending. And once, you know, what are the number of tasks um, that has been completed and what is the status of your workflow right now? Finally, I wanted to show you what's the process to export your annotated data. So here, if you go to the data sets tab, you will be able to see all of the different data sets that you've annotated. And if you click on any one of them, it's, it's going to show you what's the quality, um, you know, what are the settings, you know, different classes. If you want to share it with, with people, you can even do that. So especially since my account is an educator's account, so educator researchers. So the, the goal is for you to annotate and share it with the community. So now that you have all of the annotated data, you can actually click on this link, which is called export data. Or you can say, you know, create there and, and export the data. Now, by default, if you just, let's say, create a new version, version new. And by default, the, the format in which, uh, you know, data gets generated is JSON. And you can definitely change this format. You can call it, you know, the Pascal VOC format. Um, there is a Darwin XML format. There is Coco format. All of the well-known formats already exist. And there is also capability of transforming one XML format or one JSON format to the other. Now, in this case, what we had done was semantic segmentation. So you can even select the semantic segmentation map. And then you just say, um, you know, export the data set. Um, and this takes some time. Once it is done, you can just click on download and that's there. So now let's take a look. The first, uh, the, the first text file will tell you the mapping. So this is the color for the cars. And then this is the color for the roads. Now let's take a look at the masks that got generated in the process. So the first off, this is the, this is the road. So you see, this is the, the green, uh, you know, semantic segmentation masks that I had, uh, you know, detected. So it was the road. And then if you have the road and the car, so that's the reason why you see the cars are red and the roads are green. One thing that I didn't want to mention that if you have volumetric semantic segmentations, then exporting volumetric semantic segmentations, you can only do that in the JSON format. So if you say, um, you know, export this, this particular data, create an export, and um, here I, I call it V1M1, and export one item, you will see that it is generating and it will only generate this in the JSON format. Even if you have your output in your JSON format, it's not a big deal because then you can easily use something like a U polygon. Again, 
the, the, the extensions are in Python, if you use this, uh, you know, th this particular package, you will be able to generate the polygon, uh, you know, semantic segmentation maps, that is the you know, images uh, corresponding to the JSON file. Now, one thing that I will mention is there is also the capability of re-annotation. So let's say that you are, you start with, uh, with some annotations, but you want to re-annotate or you want, you have uh, you know, images annotated in a particular JSON format, you want to change them. There is also capability of doing that, but all of this is actually done using the CLI or the command line interface. So I will quickly show you how to install the, uh, the command line interface. So in this case, I have to uh, do a pip install um, or a conda install Darwin PI. So let's do that. So now Darwin is just uh, the whole package, the Python package that helps you connect this particular tool, the online tool to the command line interface. And you go to the, to, to the main page, here you will see this thing called API keys. And API keys is what you need in order to connect your command line interface to this, uh, to this web tool. And I say Darwin authenticate. And this is going to ask for your API key. You see, and here it'll, it'll tell you that the authentication has succeeded. So once you've done this, passing data to the tool becomes super easy. You can really take bulky volumes of data and, and pass it to the tool. And you can also do annotation. And then, uh, you know, your pre-annotations can be uploaded along with uh, the, the fact that you can also, uh, you know, download it, it, you know, way faster. Final thoughts on using V7. Now, as a, a user, I really think that V7, the authors, they really thought through the whole process. There is a support for semantic segmentation. There is support for videos. There is you know, support for medical imaging and also for volumetric semantic segmentations. There is support for transferring um, you know, data from annotated data from one JSON to the other and also downloading semantic segmentation. And also what I truly liked is the fact that they support educators and researcher communities so that it is a free tool for people who want to share data, annotate and share data for research purposes. So, so I really appreciate the amount of support and the, the ease of usage. Um, it's pretty fast and also downloading smaller batches of data is not an issue as well. One thing that I will uh, you know, put out there is if you are using LiDAR data, then there is no support for annotating LiDAR data in V7 as yet. But apart from that, I really found the ease of use and the, able, the, the ability to increase the number of, of classes and the ability to re-annotate, download, and reuse the work to be super impressive and useful. So those were my thoughts. I hope you liked the video. Stay tuned for the next one.